Tonight's debate is the last debate before Super Tuesday, and here in Charleston, South Carolina, the candidates will go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to get in their last words before voting begins on Saturday. Outside the debate hall, we talk to supporters from all sides. Joe Biden, Vice President Biden for President, and I believe that experience matters when it comes to turning things around for the next four years. I mean, you literally have a self-proclaimed socialist leading the Democrat Party right now and running against the greatest economy we have seen in over a generation. And before the debate, the latest poll in South Carolina showed Biden in the lead with a 30.3 percent of the vote. But that could all change after tonight's debate. Things got off to a heated start. Mayor Michael Bloomberg attacking Senator Bernie Sanders on claims of Russian involvement in his campaign. I, I think that uh, Donald Trump thinks it would be better if he's president. I do not think so. Vladimir Putin thinks that Donald Trump is, should be president of the United States. And that's why Russia is helping you get oh, elected so Mr. you'll Bloomberg. lose to him. But Bloomberg didn't go without being questioned. Senator Elizabeth Warren called out the former mayor for being the only one on stage who hadn't released their tax returns. We know that Mayor Bloomberg has been doing business with China for a long time, and he is the only one on this stage who has not released his taxes. He plans to release them after Super Tuesday. We'll Amy Klobuchar got in the mix, calling out Sanders for the cost of his Medicare for All plan. No, the math does not add up. In fact, just on 60 Minutes uh, this weekend, he said he wasn't going to rattle through the nickels and the dimes. Well, let me tell you how many nickels and dimes we're talking about. Nearly $60 trillion. Mayor Pete Buttigieg also attacking the plan, saying many Democrats don't support it. 40 Democrats who are not running on your platform. They are running away from your platform as fast as they possibly can. And to make himself stand out from the crowd, Biden used his experience to gain voters' support. A guy is a friend of mine down here named Fritz Hollings. He passed away. He said, you want to know what a man and woman will do? Look what they've done. Look what they've done. After the debate, the candidates made their way to the spin room. I think people want something different. And what I have to offer is something different. I'm someone that actually gets things done um, and brings people with me, not just in elections, but how I govern. I got to ask businessman Tom Starr how he planned to appeal to college age voters. What would you say to get young voters to come out and vote for you? Well, let me say that the organization I started, Next Gen America, does more organizing of people between 18 and 35 than anyone else in American history. So let me say this. I am the person who care, who's, cares the most about climate here. I have the history of working successfully on climate change in terms of passing legislation around the country and also stopping pipelines and stopping fossil fuel plants. The last fossil fuel plant ever to be proposed in my home state. I stopped with other activists. It was going to be in a low income Latino neighborhood in Oxnard. So, what I say to them is this I'll declare a state of emergency on day one on climate. The primary is to be held this Saturday on the 29th. From Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Lydia Blackstone, SGTV News 4.